uh, Super Bowl champ, 13 decorated years in the NFL, and he's our friend Howie Long. He is joining us. Of course, his sons, Chris and Kyle, play in the NFL. You know, it's interesting. There are, there are things during a season you can correct. Uh, there's a trade deadline. Uh, you draft a yep. player. They're just not quite ready. They get better by Thanksgiving than they were on Labor Day. And then there's things you can't correct. And I look at Kansas City's defense, and I know Frank, is it Frank? Chris Jones is coming back. I, they'll be better up front. <clears throat> but, Howie, that Buffalo did whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted to. They kind of pushed them around. I don't know if some of this Kansas City defense, is it all, it, they're two and three. I don't know how much is correctable. Well, and I, and I think when, when the offense has a bad night, which they did, uh, you know, you could write some of the other losses off, particularly on offense, to mistakes that were made, uh, poor choices. The numbers were big. They were running the ball, you know, really effectively. Uh, you know, yep. I, I love the way they were running the football. And, and they were putting up big numbers through the air, and, and Patrick was making his share of plays. And they're kind of a Ferrari offense yeah. and, you know, Buff Buffalo made the decision. We're going to play coverage and they've had a lot of time to think about this. They had the two losses <laughs> versus them last year. And, you know, you go on the road in Kansas city and this is their second loss there, which is really saying something, but they forced them to be <clears throat> something they don't like to be. And that's patient. Yeah. You know, the check downs were there. The yep. middle of the field was open. The seam, they didn't work it. Uh, there were some dropped balls. One interception was went right through the hands of uh, one of the receivers. To me, this was a game where the defense becomes much more glaring when your offense, which you rely on every week to be great, stumbles. I, I want to talk about uh, the Chargers-Browns game, which was crazy fun. So this was Jimmy Johnson on your guys' show yesterday. Jimmy talking about Justin Herbert. Here it is. Jimmy Johnson. The Chargers, they've got a star at quarterback. Justin Herbert, you know, six touchdown passes in the red zone the last couple of weeks. And in fact, if I was drafting in the NFL today, of all the players, my number one pick would be Justin Herbert. He's that biggest star. Over Mahomes? Over Mahomes. Well, it's interesting because you know Oregon football well because one of your sons played there. And wow. so wow. You, you saw Herbert before all of us saw Herbert. I got to tell you, when I watch him, I, I talked to an offensive guy, a former NFL coach this week, and he said Herbert would be easier to coach than Mahomes because he's so disciplined. His size, his footwork, he's a pleasure to coach. Not a lot of correctable stuff here. I don't know. I, I look at Herbert, and I don't want to be too hyper on a Monday, but, man, you've been watching him play since college, Howie. It's different. <clears throat> yeah. I, you know, I, I said it last year in the middle of the season. I, I think he's a generational talent. I think five, six times a game he does something, makes a throw, pulls it down and, and runs like he did yesterday, four touchdowns through the air, one on the ground. He's had 11 touchdowns over the last three weeks, no interceptions. He's big. He's super athletic. He has a cannon for an arm. He has that kind of Northwest sensibility. He's super smart. Uh, to me, it's a no brainer. I, I think, you know, the system in Oregon didn't necessarily, <clears throat> excuse me, play to his talents. Right. But, you know, once they got to the bowl game and once he got to the senior bowl and, and here's the thing about quarterback, it, it's, it's the hardest position to predict in terms of translation from high school to college college to pro and sometimes you just have to trust what you see yeah and you could make the same statement for his left tackle slater slater to me was the most kind of polished game ready pure left tackle in the draft and they were fortunate enough to get him and now you've locked up your left tackle and you've locked up your quarterback who is not just a franchise quarterback but you can make the argument if you're you're listing the top five quarterbacks He's certainly in the conversation towards the top. Hey, listen, uh, we both know John Gruden. You know him better than I did. Uh, you know, ugly remarks. Nobody's going to defend those. I don't know what happens yeah. going going forward. But once again, um, they start hot. They're a little bit of a mess. He's now in trouble. You're kind of gut feeling on the state of this team. I, I, I don't have an answer for it, but they look great in September. Maybe it's an offensive coach in the offseason dials up plays. They come in with a lot of juice. They lose it. They were flat. He's in trouble. What do you see going forward for Gruden and the Raiders? 
Well, I, you know, I felt like this was, was a different team. Uh, you know, I, I will say this. The offensive line has been a, a real issue. Yeah. And, and part, of that's, part of that's injury and part of that's just not being able to put the best five guys out there on the field. And, and that, that chips away at, number one, your, your run game, and it chips away at what your run game sets up, and it puts Derek Carr in, in unenviable situations. But they just didn't play well. Uh, they were flat, uh, and I'm not quite sure why, and it's something, maybe the distractions during the week, I, I don't know. Uh, I think moving forward, though, they need to get refocused and, and kind of understand where they are, and they're, what, three and two, and, and that's it's a lot better than two and three or sitting where s- some other folks are doing. But when you're looking at the Chargers and you're looking at the Chiefs, that's a tough road to hoe in that, in that division. <laughs> it really is. You know, you look around the NFL right now, and, I mean, we have four or five teams with young quarterbacks, so we know that's not going to be as dynamic. But then you look at Herbert and uh, and even Baker yesterday and Lamar tonight, um, and you start looking at Mahomes and Josh Allen. I got to tell you, I wow. the the quality of football and athlete, Howie, you were – do you realize you're smaller than some of these quarterbacks now? The <laughs> – I mean, I. Well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit heavier. Maybe I'm two fifty three, maybe. And these guys are, you know, you 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 look at uh, Herbert, Herbert. Well, the kid from Buffalo, Josh Allen, is he's a grown man, <laughs> and and some of those designed runs, which the Chiefs really didn't have an answer for, and 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 some of the pass plays off of that. Also, I, I think they're doing a great job of. Playing to his strengths, yes. his abilities. Yes. <clears throat> he, and, you know, you remember when he came out, Colin, talk about, you know, people being wrong. I mean, kid plays at Wyoming, small competition, big athletic cannon for an arm. He's inaccurate. And you can't coach that. Where is it written in stone? Did it come down off a hill <laughs> that you can't coach a guy up? His first two years versus the last two years, it, it, it's really been – a big jump and, and, you know, credit to him, uh, credit to uh, Palmer. I think he works with and, and tweaking his mechanics and uh, kind of reevaluating where he was. And I think he's got a great coaching staff and uh, I think the, the future is bright in Buffalo. And he's a guy that is, is perfect for that football team and what they want to do. You know, it's interesting. A year ago, at the at the start of last year, we were had the pandemic issues. At the start, I said I don't like Dallas because they have a bunch of good players and they're overpaying for virtually all of them. But they've hit on right. four draft picks, Howie, on four different units: C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, the UCLA defensive lineman, and uh, I'm missing one of them here. There's another kid. There. Oh, Trayvon Diggs. Four different units. They've hit home <clears throat> runs on draft picks, and now. 30, you know, now 20 games later, I'm like, oh, it's a t- this is a totally different team. Now they got some discount players. I, I look at Dallas today, Howie, and I'm like, oh, that, that team can win playoff games. That's a multi- – am I, am I being fooled here? No, and, and, I, and I think really, you know, you look at Zeke and you look at the two-back system and Zeke is the power back and they've got the change-up back. And, yep. and Lamb, to me – you know, Cooper's been banged up on and off throughout the course of this early part of the season. And, you know, if he can get healthy, Lamb looks like a number one. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, and, and Schultz got a lot of snaps last year, and I think Dak got comfortable with him <clears throat> at tight end. And, and you know, he, he plays somewhat of a big role, too, in their offensive line is somewhat healthy, and they've got production out of the backup right tackle that, that you know, most people don't have the luxury of having. But Dak – and Kellen Moore on the same page. I think Mike McCarthy, when he made the decision, whether that decision was made for him or he made the decision to keep Kellen Moore in place for continuity with Dak, you know, verbiage, their relationship being in sync. And I think those two are in sync. Yep. And I think when your quarterback is your best guy on the team and he's your hardest worker, uh, it, it, you know, it just has a, a ripple effect on the entire locker room. F- and, and what digs and what digs is doing. Oh my gosh. You know, it, it might look, it might look, might look easy, uh, but it's not. And the preparation and, and what goes into being in position and Dan Quinn has done a great job changing his system 
and, and saying, look, maybe I'm not getting it done the right way and I've got to adapt to this personnel, something they didn't do the year before. Uh, and they are flying around and they're forcing turnover. And I say, how can you kind of sustain this pace of turnovers? But when you're in position to be successful through hard work, both on the field and in the film room, and that's what he is, and he has deep, he has wide receiver skills at DB. Yeah, no, I mean, he's he's just different. There are guys that run, come into this league. Rashawn Slater, as you mentioned, you just watch how he resets his feet. Even if he's beat, you watch his hands. You see about four guys out of the draft. That's a good defense. No, that's wait. a good defense. Did you hear that story, Howie, that he literally told his running backs, stop chipping Miles Garrett. I can block him myself. It's like, what? Who says you know that? what, though, with chip, with, with chip blocks, it's interesting because more often than not, I see the chip block, it, it, you know, the timing on it, the, the communication, because if you're getting a chip block, you don't want to overset. Uh, and, and you've got that help from outside. A lot of times, the tackle will maybe overset. The chipper knocks him back inside. You've overset, and it gives him the inside lane. I think he's more comfortable just by myself, yep. stay inside out, and I I can athletically you know match up with whoever I'm playing against. And that's certainly the case down there. Good stuff, Howie Long, the Hall of Famer. Great seeing you. That looks like very nice stone behind you. I'm not going to comment on the price, but it, it's a man of means. That's very nice behind you. Whatever that is. Very well, my wife liked the stone, so I got it. <laughs> that's kind of a that's kind of a good move. I think that's what you do. Yeah, I think that is exactly what you do, and how you stay married to your beautiful wife. Yeah, uh, Howie Long, the Hall of Famer, great seeing you. Hi, everybody! Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.